God is good? All the time? Um, before we get into this anointed worship service, hallelujah, it's all Holy Spirit always. Um, I just got a couple things. Um, for one, the, the, the time now is to fight, family. I don't know how someone can call themselves a Christian, but yet cuss a brother or sister out in Christ and just run them through the ground. I don't know how someone can call themselves a Christian when they're purposely trying to hurt the church. I don't know how someone can be called a Christian when the, you don't see no different fruit from their life, that there's no different from them in the world. I ask for your prayers because we have just been wide open and I have seen some of the most demonic things in the past three days, Pastor. And so when I ask you to fight, I know because I know who I'm talking to. You're God's beloved child. You're, you're anointed. You have Holy Spirit. You're, you're well aware as far as the price that was paid for you and where God lives inside you. You're well, we are well aware of how you speak and how you treat other peoples because the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ is love Father. Father God. Say with me, Abba. Abba. Love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then Lord Jesus said, and then I want you to love others as you love yourself, right? My question is, is how can we say that we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, but then we turn around and, and cuss at each other, lie at each other, gossip, and think that there's no ramifications for it? You know how many times I told people this week, you need to zip that up because I'll tell you right now, I don't even know this other person. In a couple occasions, I did know both parties involved. But I said, but what you're doing, you're opening your house wide open to the devil. And you're allowing the devil to come in and just do whatever he wants because God has nothing to do with what you're speaking of. So when we say that we're supposed to fight, Please, family, please. Yes, it's your, your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Say it with me, my relationship. my relationship. It's your relationship with God. However, that relationship with God, this is where Holy Spirit said you're going to see the fruit. Right? So if you have this relationship, the fruit that is overflowing from your life is just like Jesus. Can you get an amen? amen? And I want to encourage our church family right now. I'm going to tell you right now, it's, it's all out there. It's all out there right now. I mean, I'm talking about people that I used to worship with, pray for, go visit. I mean, and, and just like that, just like that, because their feelings get hurt, quick to cuss you out. That's the devil. So I'm asking you guys, right? In this worship service that, that Elder Charlie's going to preach, it's all Holy Spirit. Amen? Through this worship service, can, can, can we examine our relationship with God? Can we examine as far as Father? If I'm quick to judge my brothers or sisters, if I'm quick to throw the stone, if I'm quick, right? If I, remove it out of me because it's the devil. And God doesn't want that for you anymore. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> Elder Charlie, I don't know how much gooder it can be for, you know, I had to lay all that out. Now you can just make everybody feel good. Praise God. <laughs> but it's long overdue. Live from Paraville, Kentucky. No, not Paraville. But you know what? He is on the way to Paraville. Amen. So do it again. Do it with me. Reset. 
live from Lebanon, Kentucky, our very own Elder Charles Mattingly. I don't know about all that, but anyway, that's a little bit much. Huh? How's everybody doing today? Good. Well, I'm doing all right, but I am fighting the sinuses. I promise you my voice is not changing. It'll come back. As soon as I get my Bible open here, we'll get started. There we go. Set this over here. You know what? I'm looking around, and I, I see we're kind of small in numbers, but we're large with the Lord. Amen. Amen. I was actually supposed to give this message on Sunday, but I had to work all weekend, so joy filled in. I said, well, today's the day. Amen. And it's kind of great because we had a beautiful marriage here Saturday. Amen. Brother Sidney and Tatiana, is that right? Yep. And I'm sure she was absolutely gorgeous, and so was he. I'm sure she was probably beautiful. Yeah. I'm sure she was beautifully dressed in a white dress. Amen. But today we're going to look at a couple different things. And when I mention marriage, a lot of people think of marriage between husband and wife. But we're going to take it a little bit deeper this time, and we're going to talk about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen? We're going to do some comparisons between the two, because they're very similar. If you study the Bible, if you study the Word, you're going to find out that it's very similar the way it works. So this week is a special week to me. Uh, this Saturday... Well, first off, we're going to be in these scriptures here today, if y'all want to write them down. Ephesians 5, 21 through 27, and Ephesians 5, 29 through 32, Revelations 19, 7 through 9, and Revelations 21, 2. And like I said, we're going to do this comparison between marriage of husband and wife and marriage supper of the Lamb. Like I said, this weekend is a... Is a this Saturday is, is a, it's a special day for me and Melissa. As you can see, back in the day when I didn't have green, uh, gray hair, uh, I, I looked a lot younger back in those days. Sydney, Tantiana, 28 years later. <laughs> but anyway, this is me and my beautiful bride. My bride. I started dating Melissa when I was 16, when she was 16 years old and I was 19. And so we grew up together our whole lives. We spent a lot of time together. We're not going to spend so much time on the dating part of it, but that is a dating part of it. It's that preparation, you know, to getting ready for that marriage. Amen. I'm going to kind of start off on this day, this particular day back in 1993. I'll tell you how this, this morning began. We were at my mother and father's house getting ready to go up to church to get married and we were preparing all of a sudden I wake up I forget the checkbook oh that's a bad mistake so at four o'clock in the morning I'm going back to Harrodsburg and I'm getting my checkbook to come all the way back to Lebanon and we're preparing and making everything for our big wedding feast amen and we had a big wedding it was huge had people coming from all over Everybody was coming to celebrate this special occasion with us. Amen. So we went through that day. We got married. And we, uh, we went off on our honeymoon and had a great time. And 28 years later, here we are, or this weekend. Amen. Amen. Now, I will say, in 28 years, there's been some bumps in the road. You know, God never promises that this life is going to be perfect. On this earth, it's not going to be perfect. But I can guarantee you one thing, on the next life, it's going to be perfect. Amen. Holy Spirit tells us, amen. I promise you, I promise you, God is perfect. Holy Spirit is perfect. Jesus is perfect. It'll be perfect. I promise you. But what we have to do is we have to fight. Sydney, I'm telling you guys, I, I'm a very big advocate for marriages because my marriage struggled because of my disobedience, because of Melissa's disobedience. And I'm telling you guys, you got to fight for your marriage. There's no other way to do it, but you've got to fight. you got to get through the tough times. 
If you don't think there's going to be tough times, you got another thing coming. Everything's great right now because you're in the honeymoon phase. But as you get older, everybody changes. Your family changes. The world changes around you. you got to fight and you got to stay focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, let's get started. So I've been studying this for a while now because, like I said, I, I wanted to do this message on Sunday, but God put me here on Wednesday to do this message. And I'm sure it's being recorded live, so I hope this blesses somebody's marriage. So I, I've kind of been doing some comparisons between marriage and marriage supper of the Lamb. All right? And, and in that study, on that day, like I said, we, on, before we got married, we had to prepare we had to prepare for our physical marriage here on this earth. You know, we had invitations, receptions, food. We had to make sure the pastor was there. We had to make sure everything was lined up. The honeymoon was taken care of. It's a lot of preparation for a wedding. And, of course, we had a, I mean, it was a pretty good-sized wedding. The marriage supper of the Lamb is when we spiritually are preparing ourselves for that great day of that wedding feast. And it's coming. And it's coming very soon. The very first thing we're going to do is the first thing that I did when I got down on my knee and asked Melissa to marry me in front of her family. If you're a born again Christian, you ask God to come into your heart. That's the very first thing you did in preparing for the marriage supper of the Lamb. It has to be. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. During that preparation and during that journey, getting prepared for it, getting involved in church, preaching, teaching, reading the word, getting yourself ready for that, for that marriage feast. The beautiful bride wears a white dress, often with a veil which is to be removed by her husband. In these scriptures that I'm getting ready to show you guys here in a few minutes, the bride is wrapped in a bright fine linen which symbolizes purity and perfection. The spiritual veil is also removed. So when we pass from this life to the next life and we go be with that wedding feast of the Lamb, we're in perfection. We are totally pure. There's nothing wrong with us. Our bodies are healed. The Bible tells us there's no more sorrow. There's no more pain. There's no more suffering. Okay? There's no more night. There's no more day. It's going to be a beautiful wedding feast. Endless, endless buffet. The reception is to follow after the wedding ceremony. The wedding feast will take place in the heavens after marriage of the, after the marriage of the Lamb and the church. In these scriptures that I'm getting ready to share with you guys, I'm hoping that you all will, will concentrate on the, on the physical marriage of, hum, hum, of the husband and wife and also the spiritual marriage of, of the Lord. And the day that he's coming back for his bride without spot or blemish. Amen. He's coming. And he's coming quickly. He tells us that in his word. Okay. Let's get started. Ephesians 5, 21 through 27. Submit to one another out of the reverence to Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. His body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, I know you've heard this before, but I'm going to say it again. Your wife submitting to you does not make you the owner of your wife. She is not your slave. Amen. You are to love and cherish her and honor her. Scripture tells us here just in a second, in this, maybe this next verse, is that we're supposed to honor her. Husbands, wives are to submit to one another and equally. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing of the water through the word and to present her her to himself as a radiant church without stain, wrinkle, or any blemish, but holy and blameless. When I read that verse, I actually thought about you guys, and I thought about my wife in that picture that we found, because that day 
when I saw my wife walk down that long aisleway at that church, she was without stain, blemish, and she was as beautiful as anything I've ever seen. She's still beautiful, by the way. But anyway, when I saw her coming down through there, I was like, golly, man, this is unbelievable. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And, and we still had that wedding dress, and, and we pulled it out from time to time. And when I see it, I still think about that day when I saw her walk down that aisleway, how radiant she was, how she was just, it was just perfect. It was a perfect situation in everything. When I see, when I see that and read cleansing her by washing her with water, uh, through, with water through the word, I often think about the times that I spend time praying for my wife and praying for my family you know I probably don't do it as much as I should but I do it to myself you know the Bible tells us to go into our secret pray, place to pray you know me and my wife used to pray together all the time and we do from time to time and we do have a lot of discussions about Jesus and Holy Spirit when I read that verse it makes me feel like that's what we're doing. You know, we are, we are feeding one another, building each other up in the Lord. You know, Christ wants us to love him, honor him, and, and be with him as much as we can each and every day. Ephesians 5, 29 through 32. After all, no one ever hated their own body but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. I'm going to stop right there. If you are a born again Christian, you are members of Holy Spirit. You are members of his body. You are members of Jesus Christ. There's no changing that. You cannot change that. For, the, for this reason, a man will... Leave his father and mother and, the two, and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. If you think back and what Christ did for us, what Jesus did for us on that cross that day. He prepared himself through his whole ministry. He prepared himself that day of that suffering, of that crucifixion of all the pain and agony, the beatings he took for us, everything he'd done for us, he was preparing us to die for us, to die for our sins, that we may be saved, amen, that we, when we die, we will become blameless, spotless, without blemish or stain, amen? You know, the Lord has done everything for us. He has taken away our sins, he tells us in his word that he's coming back for his church, his bride, without spot or blemish. If you're a born-again Christian, we should be preparing ourselves for this marriage feast. Whether we're raptured out of here or whether we pass away and we're gone. One of these days, as Joey and John says a lot of times, we're going to stand before that Lord. We're going to stand before him. And he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. Or, come on in here and let's have a feast. Let's have a party. Amen. Oh, and it's going to be a party, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Get in the book of Revelations. It's going to be a party. It's going to be a party. Let's move on. Revelations 19, 7 through 9. Now I'm going to, I'm going to try to fill in some of the gaps on the, mar on the, on the marriage supper of the Lamb. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was giving her to wear. I wanted to put these scriptures in here. You know, when, when we preach up here and when we do different studies and stuff, if, we, if you can't back it up by scripture, you don't need to believe it. If it doesn't come out of this book, you're sword. You don't have to believe it, amen? 
if people are sitting there just blasting off different things, but it does, and they can't back it up with Scripture, you better run the opposite direction. Amen. Amen. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and the bride has made herself ready. The bride is us. The bridegroom is Jesus himself. The bride is us. We are at the point now, guys, and, it's, and I know I hear people say this all the time, well, this world can't last much longer. Well, it's going to happen someday. Oh, yeah, it's going to happen because the Word tells us it's going to happen. So my word to you guys is, is start preparing yourself right now as best you can Amen. and getting ready. We need to get ready. Then the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Let me tell you about that wedding supper. How many in here has ever ate at a golden corral? Amen. I know most of you have. We're talking about a wedding supper of, a, of no end. We're talking about a meal, a feast, a party that goes on forever and ever and ever. Praising our Lord and Savior. We only feel Holy Spirit and everything. But when we get in there, we're going to see Him face to face. The gospel tells us that. You know, it's coming. We're going to be shouting. We're going to, we're going to be with our families, our friends. We're going to be up there and it's going to be endless. 24-7. No more tiredness. Won't have to go to bed no more. Won't have to pay no more bills. Amen. Amen. No more bills in heaven. Amen. 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 That's great, ain't it? Yeah. But make sure you pay your bills right now, okay? Because, yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, you need to still stay up with it. It's not going to be a long message. But I want to read this message, and then I've got some other things I'm going to share with you all. Because I want to make sure you understand how important it is for us to prepare ourselves. We're, we're not perfect. I, I'm not perfect. Guys, I'm not even worthy to be up here preaching to you all. I mess up every day. I sin every day. I promise you. And when I sin, I kick myself in the hind parts because I know I've done wrong. But the only thing I can do is tell God to forgive me. And help me to be better each and every day of my life. Amen. That's all we can do. You know, we're not going to be perfect. We're not going to be without spot or blemish until we get to heaven. There will be no more sickness. You won't need that old cane. You'll be running. Yeah, you'll be running, David. Revelations 21.2, I saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem. Coming down out of the heavens from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Listen, guys. As we prepare for us down here, God is preparing for us up there when we get to heaven. The Word tells us that there is a mansion for us up there. Amen. If you're a born-again Christian, God has built you a mansion. It says in my father's house there are many mansions. Every one of us is going to have a big old house. It'll be without spot or blemish. I'm going to show you. As I was studying this word, and I, I, I feel like this, I need to read this. Because when some people think of heaven, they think, oh yeah, it's going to be streets of gold. Oh no, 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 no. There's a whole lot more in heaven than streets of gold. Amen. I didn't put this, this one on here because I want to read it straight out of this word. I want to make sure that you know that all my scriptures come out of this Bible. And it says... I'm reading in uh, Revelations 21, 9. And I'm going to start just a couple words down here. It says, Come, and I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away to the Spirit, in the Spirit, to a mountain great and high, and, he, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It's shown with the glory of God and its brilliance, with 
was like that of a very precious jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three gates on the north, and three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations. Most houses only have one foundation. Our heaven's got 12 foundations, amen. Tell me this thing ain't big. Now I lost my place. And on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The angel, the angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was, was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length, and as wide and as high as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurements, and it was 144 cubits thick. The walls were made of jasper, and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundation of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third gate, the fourth gate, emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh crystallite, the eighth beryl, and the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinthus, and the twelfth am amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of single pearl. The great street of the city was gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. We're going to be in a temple, guys, and that temple is the Lamb of God. Listen to this. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of the God gives it light. Our Lord God Almighty is the shining light of heaven. We don't need a flashlight. There's going to be no more darkness. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor onto it, into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. Never. It always, God's light will shine forever, guys. You know, we've had, we've had some people lose some parents. Sister Kathy lost her husband, uh, lost her dad, and, and they put him to rest today. He is in perfection now. He is seeing this right now in heaven. And I pray she watches this message because he's not suffering no more. We've all lost loved ones. Fathers, husbands, sons, grandmothers, and, and maybe children. Listen, if they're born again Christian, look what they're seeing right now. Their eyes are open to the Lamb. Their eyes are open to the light of God right now. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Listen here. Nothing impure, nothing impure will ever enter it. Will never enter. Look how crazy this world is, guys. Look at the internet. Look at the stuff on the internet. Look at the stuff that goes around that you see on the news if you watch the news look at what goes on just at what Joy was just talking about none of this there's no anger there's no anger no bitterness it's all in heaven it's perfect no impure thing will ever enter it nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful but only and I say only only is only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life will enter it. Amen. Now listen, I'm getting ready to close. And I think this message is short, but it's powerful. Listen to me. I pray that you guys are preparing yourself for this big wedding day feast. 
if you're married right now, I pray that you all pray together and fight for your marriage just as Jesus fought for us. Jesus fought and died for us. He died for our sins. He went all the way. He didn't give up. He never gave up. He went all the way. He wanted to give up. If we, Scripture tells us, he said, take this cup from me, right? No, 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 no. He didn't. He went all the way, just as we're doing it. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep fighting and keep doing what we're supposed to do to serve and honor our God. Amen. Now listen, I'm getting ready to play a song. It's a very familiar song with all of us. It's called, I Can Only Imagine. Can you guys imagine what it's going to be like? How many here has aches and pains? Amen. I know I do, and I know you guys, most of y'all do. Listen, you won't have that in heaven. You won't have that in heaven. You will be healed for eternity. My prayer to you guys is that you fall madly, intimately in love with God. And as I grow through this, I can guarantee you I'm preparing myself for that wedding day. Amen. I can guarantee you, if I passed away tomorrow, I don't want no crying at my funeral. I'll tell you right now, I'm like my father-in-law. I want y'all to have a party. Amen. 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 I'm serious. I tell my wife that. I don't want it. I'd rather have a big revival. I want to see people come to know the Lord to get prepared for this wedding feast we're about to have. Amen. You guys rise to your feet.